And you're watching Panta Blanjawan with me, Nina Rosman. And today we're going to focus on the wish list budget from a variety of aspects, including taxation. The much anticipated budget 2025 with the team Economy Madani, Negara Makmuls, Rakyat Sejahtera is set to be unveiled on 18 October 2024. The government is expected to propose measures focused on mobilizing additional tax revenues to meet its medium term goal of achieving a 3% deficit target while monitoring the nation's future spending requirements and to ensure Malaysia's tax base continues to support sustainable growth, a progressive tax system that reduces tax leakage and enhances tax compliance is crucial. In this segment, we will explore how these proposed measures can provide deeper insights into designing tax policies than that promotes fairness, equity and economic growth. And for that, I welcome our guest, Mr. Solian Sang, the President, Chartered Tax Institute of Malaysia, City. I am want to say thank you very much, Mr. So, for joining me. Firstly, I want to take a look on the multi-year tax framework. How can the implementation of a multi-year tax framework enhance long-term fiscal planning and economic stability for businesses and investors in Malaysia? In what ways do you foresee the MOITF contributing are accelerating the goals of the economy Madani reforms, particularly in terms of fostering sustainable growth and equitable development. Yeah, thank, thank you, Nina, and a very good morning to um, everyone. Uh, in terms of the multi-year tax framework, actually, the first question is what it is. Uh, a well-designed um, MYTF should cover key areas such as policy objective, uh, tax legislative reform. Uh, tax administration and compliance, and those tax incentives and exemptions. Now, by establishing a MYTF, tax authorities and businesses can operate with more predictability over several years. Uh, this will reduce uncertainty and help businesses make long-term financial and investment decisions in terms of that. Uh, and this approach will also allow for better alignment of tax policies with a broader economic goal. And with this, businesses can adjust operations and their supply chain accordingly. Uh, and also another angle, the framework can also incorporate gradual tax rate adjustment, uh, some kind of targeted tax incentive, and that encourage certain growth in specific areas, uh, Nina. And also, we will take a look at the fiscal deficit and tax base expansion. Given the constraints of the Public Finance and Fiscal Responsibility Act, which aims to limit the fiscal deficit to 3%, do you anticipate the government broadening the tax base or introducing new tax mechanisms to achieve this target? If so, what potential areas of taxation might be prioritised other than you've mentioned the adjustment of a tax rate? Yeah, based on the pre-budget statement, um, the government is committed to broadening the tax base uh, through a progressive tax system that reduces leakages and enhances compliance. Now, in this respect, if you look at those uh, tax initiatives that introduced in 2024, uh, there is some potential for further enhancement. Uh, that includes the scope of e-invoicing that must be continuously clarified to ensure businesses can capture all relevant transactions. By doing so, overall tax compliance will improve. And as we all know, once everyone within the fall within the tax net, it will help broaden the tax base and reduce the shadow economy in Malaysia. Uh, capital gains tax is next, where making the current substance based exemption, which is limited to three years, to a permanent feature that by conducting further studies, uh, this will help broaden the tax base. This approach definitely will have more transactions that can be captured and ultimately contributing to a more comprehensive and robust tax system. Uh, when we talk about uh, service tax, for example, a more comprehensive review uh, for the service tax framework can apply uh, and also those recently announced on, on the logistics sector that is needed and the free zone exemption must continue based on the physical uh, place of service or substance. This will definitely provide certainty to businesses, ensuring that they can plan and operate with a clear understanding of their tax obligations. Uh, of course, other considerations the government can announce is the implementation of a high-value good tax and sugar shortening tax. 
Adding on the high value goods tax HVGT with the delay in implementing the high value goods tax originally set for May 2024, what further clarifications or adjustments do you expect in the upcoming budget 2025? Could this delay indicate a potential shift in the government's tax policy on luxury items? Yeah, on the high value goods tax, we expect more comprehensive details uh, to be announced in this upcoming. Uh, given that the government's ongoing consultation with relevant stakeholders uh, to finalise the details of the heavy GT, uh, that includes the scope of goods covered and associated threshold. Uh, I believe this would ensure the effectiveness of tax without adversely affecting the economy. Uh, it is likely that the government would maintain the previously proposed tax rate of 5% to 10% since it was announced in the Budget 24. Uh, the sector that most likely to be affected include luxury goods uh, such as jewellery and watches, and uh, different items with a different threshold value will then be announced. And also the sugar sweetened beverage SSB tax. Considering the growing global trend of taxing sugar sweetened beverages, how do you view the proposed introduction of the SSB tax in budget 2025? Uh, yeah, as what mentioned uh, before by the health minister, this introduction of uh, SSB tax uh, will align with global trend that aim at promoting healthier lifestyle. Uh, this also will is a move that is also in line with the Malaysia's public health uh, goals. And uh, at the same time, it can also generate additional revenue for the country. But in terms of the tax, it is likely to be based on sugar contained per litre of beverage. Uh, this can be similar to some of the models implemented in other countries. Uh, example of those countries that have successfully implemented uh, this is uh, Mexico. Uh, this was introduced uh, a voluntary trick SSB tax in 2014. By 2016, there was a report indicate that a 37% reduction in the total volume of SSB purchase as compared to the year before the tax. United Kingdom that introduced the soft drink industry levy in April 2018, which taxes producer based on the sugar concentration in drinks. And this also has led to widespread reformulation of products to sugar, uh, reduce the sugar levels. Uh, this, if it's introduced, we will expect the similar impact to Malaysia. Nina. And do you see that this impact uh, will have on public health in industry practices in Malaysia? Maybe you can share with us what some of the best practices that we can learn from other countries in adapting the sugar tax. Well, uh, like I mentioned, some of the uh, best practices, what they have done, uh, the government has uh, carried a proper uh, a study before finalizing the rate and depending, of course, on the sugar content. Best practices, I think both agencies uh, got to work together to come out with uh, the study before the rate can be implemented. Yeah. An expansion on existing taxes. In your opinion, which existing taxes could see significant expansion to help strengthen Malaysia's revenue base? Do you believe the sales and service tax, SST, might be one of the key areas targeted for adjustment? Yeah, uh, on that note, we do not expect or anticipate the return of GST uh, in the budget 2025, uh, given that uh, the Prime Minister firm stand against the reintroduction uh, due to concern over inflation and the current economic climate. Uh, at the moment, if we observe, the government seems to focus on maintaining the economic stability and addressing uh, the cost of living issues. And that will make a GST re-implementation challenging at the moment. Uh, but notwithstanding the above, uh, we are also hoping to see uh, some of the benefits by incorporating some of these features of GST into SST to promote a fairer tax system uh, that can enhance compliance and, of course, broaden revenue generation. Now, these features uh, are considered progressive, uh, such as a single tax on the value-added 
each stage of the goods and services supply chain. And also the important part is an input tax credit mechanism that allows businesses to claim a credit for the tax that they pay on goods and services purchased. Now, this could also be augmented by an automated refund mechanism to enhance taxpayers' experience. Uh, we hope that the government will consider this feature to enhance SST. Now, if it's not announced for this coming budget, it could be announced in the next year's budget. Yeah. And with the report saying that new taxes such as unhealthy food tax, carbon pricings, inheritance tax and a possible tax of artificial intelligence, which of these do you think would be the most feasible and impactful for Malaysia's economic landscape considering current socioeconomic factors? Yeah, uh, based on those reports, uh, they are saying that government could introduce, I think number one, you just mentioned unhealthy food tax. Now, this unhealthy food tax can be complementing the existing sugar, shooten, uh, beverage tax. You know? The scope could be easily broadened to include foods that are high in fat and salt, now, which can increase revenue collection, of course. But however, defining which foods that should be subject to an unhealthy food tax uh, may not be so straightforward. You know? As many foods, if you consume insufficient quantity can still contribute to obesity, you know. But while both taxes can effectively tackle the escalating of obesity and related health issues, uh, studies should show uh, and also carry out. And some of this report suggests that low-income groups are more res responsive to this high-fat, sugar salt type of food taxes. Now, Though this can feature a broad based uh, tax base and high tax rate, but this group will usually demonstrate the responsiveness to this good experiencing more substantial kind of health benefit. Uh, I hope a study, comprehensive study on this potential economic burden uh, can be carried out, especially on the lower income consumer, because if that's so, then subsidies can be considered to mitigate such regressive financial impacts on these taxes. Uh, the other thing also uh, is important to balance this approach with other factors to ensure a fair and effective tax system. Uh, carbon tax pricing. Now for carbon tax pricing, I think this is in line with Malaysia's green economy agenda and the initiative to combat climate change. Now, Malaysia somehow or other will have to start implementing the carbon pricing to facilitate carbon trading. And uh, if you look into those carbon taxing, such as the uh, European Union that prepares to commence its carbon border adjustment mechanism, CBAM, in 2026. So under CBAM, the export of steel and, and any other five listed items from Malaysia will be taxed by the EU unless Malaysia collect the tax. So the, select, the selection of the most appropriate uh, CPI, what we call, requires this careful consideration to ensure this uh, is both environmentally effective and equitable. Uh, I also see that another challenge is to address the adaptation and the transition costs for businesses and now, with aligning this uh, effort that must in line with the international climate commitment and domestic policy. So in this case, Malaysia needs to harmonize its carbon pricing strategy with global climate objective uh, and this to stress the need for strategic planning. Uh, in my view, Malaysia must consider implementing this carbon pricing and tax before the EU's carbon border tax begins in 2026. The other one is inheritance tax. I think this is something um, has been a, a, a topic of debate uh, for some time. The uh, question now is whether it should be included in the budget 2025. Uh, I would say it depends on various factors. Now, while, you, while we can say that inheritance tax could provide the government with additional revenue mm -hmm. and the tax could also help the wealth inequity, inequity by redistributing inherited wealth 
But the government needs to take note that inheritance tax could also def- deter invest high net worth uh, individual who may relocate their assets or family wealth uh, to country with more favorable tax regime. Now, if this happens, this could affect the flow of capital into Malaysia mm-hmm. and probably could harm the local businesses. But if you look at the current uh, atmosphere, given that Malaysia's Madani economy objective is to promote growth, attracting foreign investment and uh, addressing uh, social equity, uh, this decision will need to balance uh, short-term political consideration with a long-term fiscal sustainability. Uh, I would propose a detailed study to be carried out first before any decision is made on this proposed uh, implementation. Uh, what I can think of is the UK, who has a well-established inheritance tax. Uh, those tax, the, the rate that has been imposed uh, is 40%. Uh, Japan is the next one that has one of the highest rate in the world with a rate of 25, uh, sorry, 55%. Uh, the last point you mentioned about artificial intelligence tax, AI, uh, this is very new actually, you know, uh, and this AI is very broad and uh, its usage is actually widespread. For example, we got the self-checkout machine at supermarket, uh, you talk about self-order machine, uh, but my view, texting AI would slow down innovation. And if you look at certain sectors, this innovation is vital for advancement in the medical field, for example, uh, food security, and even the efficient use of resources. Uh, while there are different views on the impact of AI on unemployment rates, uh, I remember reading the IBFD articles that says that taxes are not an appropriate tool to reduce automation levels and uh, at least preserve the existing jobs. Now, to draw a parallel the same way that taxing cigarettes Mm -hmm. does Mm -hmm. not prevent people from smoking. So, levy tax is not always an effective measure to dissuade a given behaviour. So, the government would really need to consider uh, before introducing such taxes, and we do not want okay. those taxes okay. that hinder the promotion of uh, R&D by, gov- by the government. But so far, I cannot recall any of a country that have uh, imposed on this. The closest perhaps I could gather is South Korea. That is the only country that has implemented a form of robot taxation. But instead okay. of directly taxing those robots, I think South Korea has reduced the tax incentive for investment in automation. So effectively increasing the tax burden on companies that heavily invest in robots. Now, this approach appears to aim to balance the benefits of automation with the need to protect jobs. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, definitely, I want to tap into more income tax adjustment, but Mr. So, please stay with me as we'll be taking a short break and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I'm going to continue discussion with our guests. Uh, still on the line, Mr. So Lian Sang, the President Chartered Tax Institute of Malaysia, CTIM. I want to say thank you very much for staying with us. Firstly, uh, going to continue to our discussion. Do you foresee any substantial, uh, substantial changes to income tax structures, both for personal and corporate taxpayer, in the upcoming budget 2025? If so, which group or sectors are likely to be most affected by these changes? Uh, Yeah, uh, we do not actually foresee major changes uh, in both personal and uh, corporate income tax rates uh, in this budget 25, uh, as the last adjustment were made in recently in budget 2023. Uh, However, there is a possibility that individual tax relief uh, may be revisited, uh, especially in the light of rising uh, living costs. For instance, the personal relief of 9000 and the disabled person's relief of 6000 which have remained unchanged for years. Now, this could be increased for better to reflect the current economy conditions. On the corporate side, uh, the government could consider targeted incentives uh, to a special
special targeted group or sector, uh, such as special concessionary corporate tax rate uh, of 0%, 5%, or even 10% for up to 10 years to attract uh, foreign direct investment, as seen with the recent announcement of the Forest City Special Financial Zone. Uh, for this, we anticipate more details uh, may be announced in the upcoming Budget 2025. Uh, as for new taxes, we do not expect major new taxes to be introduced, considering that taxpayers are still adjusting to the recent changes like the capital gains tax, global minimum tax, and the e-invoicing. Now, if any new taxes are proposed, they are likely to be implemented after 2025. And you want to talk about the mechanism uh, implementation that would be uh, conducted to every groups or sectors. And talking about the tax policy, how will the changes in tax policy affect consumer spending and inflation, especially for essential goods and services? As we can see, rising inflation is a global concern and tax changes can exacerbate price pressure, especially for essentials, items like food and energy. How will Malaysia's budget address potential inflationary impacts and where there be mechanisms like tax breaks to protect low-income consumers from the rising costs of living? Yeah, uh, I think as I mentioned uh, earlier, to say that when we talk about to protect the low-income group, um, because of the rising of the cost. Uh, one way, obviously, is to revisit the tax rate, and, uh, but it's important to uh, recategorize the B40, uh, M40, and T20. So the question is if we do encourage uh, uh, or to protect the relevant group of people, uh, tax rate or the tax bracket can be adjusted. Uh, that, is, of course, is one way. Um, the other one is we bring all the relief so that they can actually keep more cash, uh, opportunity cash flow to the particular taxpayer. Uh, in terms of the rising of the other um, uh, cost and in terms of the corporate tax, uh, the government can also consider uh, in terms of extending certain existing tax break uh, to uh, uh, support the certain sector like SME. Now, take, for example, when we talk about the current uh, green economy, uh, we wanted to promote the ESG, for example. Uh, if you look at 2024, uh, there was some initiative that has been announced. How, to, how, how do we promote some of these projects? So for that, uh, an extension of such uh, tax incentive can be considered for this coming budget, example, double deduction for some of the expenses that can be claimed uh, when a company involved in the tax project. Now, this double deduction is important to support, especially the sector of the SMEs. And we hope uh, all of this effort uh, initiative could cushion uh, the negative impact. And as the president of CTIM, what are your key recommendations for budget 2025 to better address the challenges faced by tax practitioner and ensure greater alignment between tax policy and business realities in Malaysia? Uh, thank you. Yeah, as the president of CTIM, uh, my wish leads for budget 2025 to represent the tax practitioner. Uh, I strongly promote. Uh, for the taxation fee, where can include both advisory or filing of services to be fully tax deductible under Section 331 of the Income Act 1967. Now, this change would not only alleviate the financial burden on businesses, but also encourage them to seek professional advice, especially when now all the stakeholders include the government would like to see improvement in terms of the compliance and the tax governments. Now, by doing so, this would definitely uh, help uh, the supply chain in terms of the uh, services that to be provided. Uh, the second one, uh, from a city perspective, we always have engagement with the relevant authority. In this case, it's in the Revenue Board, the Customs, uh, both agencies have done a very good job. Uh, we would like to see the effort to continue uh, the engagement 
and also in the longer term to consider simplifying the tax compliance requirements. Now, this is important by having a simplified tax compliance uh, requirement that can reduce the administrative burden and not just on the client, but also from the authority perspective. Uh, this could involve digitalizing uh, more of those processes. Uh, important also providing a clear guideline, expediting the uh, uh, gazette some of these orders, and enhancing the use of technology. Uh, this definitely will improve uh, all the processes. Uh, last but not least, uh, we also hope uh, as SMEs uh, consider part of the backbone of our economy, uh, continue to focus on targeted tax incentives for SMEs, and that, that should also be expanded to foster the growth and sustainability. This support is definitely crucial, whether it is in the form of tax break or it is in the form of grants, but this will definitely create more opportunity to assist all these businesses. So that will maybe be my wish list, uh, Nina. I'll pass it back to you. And again, I would say thank you very much, Mr. So. As we know that countries worldwide are reassessing their tax system to better suit evolving economic and social conditions. And including Malaysia's explorations of a more equitable tax system could align with global trends, ensuring competitiveness and fairness, while also ensuring the country's tax policy are forward-looking and in tune with international practices. Again, I would say thank you very much to Mr. So Lian Sang, the President Chartered Tax Institute of Malaysia, CTIM. And definitely all of our discussion here will be featured in astroawani.com across all social media platforms. And that's it from me. I'm Nina Rosman. Catch you next time.